All right. Cool. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So basically, uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about web hosting. Um, since we are only a few people on the call, uh, I'd like us to, uh, you know, have this session as interactive as possible. I'm going to start by asking people, uh, what do you understand by web hosting? You know, when someone says web hosting, what do you understand by that? I mute yourself. Oh, Levi already raised the hand. Uh, Levi, what do you think? I think web hosting, it's, it's, um, it's an online services that allows, if I have a website, that allows mm -hmm. my website can be accessible via worldwide. So anyone who have an access to the internet can access my website, it files, mm -hmm. yeah, and that has it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very close, very close. Um, and we'll see if uh, that is completely true. Um, you know, he said uh, there are online services that allow us uh, developers of different companies and individuals to have the website be accessible worldwide. Uh, anyone else? You can raise your hand or text uh, in the chat or unmute yourself and tell us. Uh, Kevin says web hosting allows your website to be accessible through the internet, correct? Um, anyone else wants to get more specific? All right. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, Let's, let, let's uh, start here because uh, it's a good start. Um, we'll use those three uh, to be able to navigate this. Uh, so, you know, we, we're thinking, we're asking ourselves, you know, web hosting, but let's start with, you know, the web part before we go to the hosting part. Okay. Uh, what kind of web application or website that we are trying to host? Uh, I'm also going to ask, People, before we get to the hosting part, right? Um, which uh, Pacific, uh, no, no, which Kevin and uh, Levi and Eve uh, told us about? Uh, let's start with the web. What what type of applications, web applications or websites uh, do you have? Like, how do you uh, categorize them? You know, any anything that comes to mind. Uh, I only need like three people. Uh, uh, if you have an idea of you know different types of web applications or websites uh, that someone can host, uh, please tell us. Mm -hmm. I need I need uh, I need everyone to. I'm going to start um, picking names by random since you're not volunteering. Uh, I'm going to start with. Uh, Fred, Fred, tell us, uh, what do you think uh, about, you know, different types of websites or web applications? Fred? <clears throat> Mic check. Okay, I'll give some, huh? I think too. Uh, for me, I can say about the different types of uh, websites it can be hosted. We mm -hmm. found some websites which are a commercial website, mm -hmm. uh, government website, mm -hmm. educational website, mm -hmm. organization websites, mm -hmm. um, and some others which can mm -hmm. be academic website. Right. Okay, 
So I have e-learning, e-commerce, uh, government, uh, business, um, uh, educational. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else who has uh, a different take on this? Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Pegista. I want us to be interacting uh, on this call because we're not so many. Uh, and, you know, we need, I need to have your ideas as well because uh, you're not only learning from me, I'm also learning from you and you are learning from each other. All right, a portfolio website. Here we are, uh-huh. Uh, Eva says shared hosting and dedicated server. We are not talking about hosting this time. We're talking about websites, not, um, you know, different types of web hosting. Uh, yeah, so we have blogs, uh, we have portfolios, we have social media web applications. Uh, anything else? All right, I think those are enough. Okay, so uh, basically um, we'll look at, you know, two broad um, types of websites. The first one is, you know, aesthetic websites. Uh, these are everything, every website that, you know, don't require anything else. They're just simple. Let's say, uh, you know, a coming soon page or um, a portfolio website um, or uh, some blog websites. Uh, some can be also be static, but basically, anything that don't require any logic uh, to work or you know, a database to work. Those are called static websites uh, or static web application, however you want to call that. Uh, it's usually interchange interchangeable, but uh, usually when it's static, they call them websites. And when it's not, they call them web applications, but uh, people use them uh, interchangeably, the, uh, the terms, right? So this diagram shows us the different, you know, this diagram shows us like how it works. This web browser, this can be your phone, uh, a browser on your phone. This can be a browser uh, on your laptop or your desktop. Uh, and what it does, you know, the first action it does, you know, it, you know, you go to let's say google.com uh, and, you know, this here is a web server uh, and, you know, it gets to the web server and then, okay, that's a, that, that would be a wrong one. That would be a random example because Google is not a static website. Who can give us an example of a static website? Who has a portfolio website? Uh, let's take an example, Agap. Let's say Agap has a, a website called agape.me or agape.com, right? When we uh, write agape.com in a browser, uh, it goes to the web server. The web server has an HTML uh, file. That file calls different other uh, websites. Um, uh, has like, a, you know, a, sorry, that, that index HTML, uh, you know, which is, you know, uh, at the root uh, has uh, different other files that are going to be, uh, you know, requested to be, you know, served. Uh, back as a response, uh, so that you know they they bundle everything together. You know, this web server handles this request by checking this and everything that you know is going to be required to run this file. For example, the CSS, the JavaScript, some images, the logos, and everything. And then it you know puts them together, and uh, just like you saw last week, it returns it back as you know in form of packets and you know, uh, and a co the collection of all those packets, uh, you know, when they are, when they reach the web browser again, uh, they're called the response and that response is displayed as this HTML file and, you know, supporting uh, assets like, you know, fonts, CSS and uh, JavaScript and uh, maybe other images, right? So uh, in our web browser, we see agape.com, but all these things, happen in, uh, you know, a second or even a fraction of a second to get to uh, this web server. And based on the internet, uh, you know, this could be, this could take like, you know, uh, up to even like five seconds if 
uh, you know, you, you have like a really, really slow connection. And if you don't have internet, you won't be able to access this web server. So Aesthetic website is a website that has, um, you know, that, that doesn't require any other layers of logic uh, to return something back uh, from the, the client. A client can be a browser, it can be anything that is going to be uh, displaying uh, the web page. All right, so uh, someone is asking, what is a portfolio website? So a portfolio website is just a website. A uh, simple site will have like your name and uh, some information about you and uh, you showcase your work, you showcase something that you can do. Uh, this is usually, uh, you know, for creative people like designers and uh, developers as well. Um, and, you know, let's say also photographers, they're also creative and they have portfolios. Uh, even, there's even um, uh, portfolios in real estate. Like if you, if you have like, you know, different things that you've been able to do, uh, they also have like portfolios, right? Uh, but usually uh, that's what people do when they uh, start to be pros in whatever they're doing, like photographers or developers, right? So uh, this is number one, um, you know, static websites. Number two is uh, called, who can guess what, what, is, uh, what number two is? Uh, there are going to be two broad types and uh, we'll see how we can host on point. Celine is on point. She says uh, dynamic. So yes, the second type is dynamic websites. Uh, these involve, um, yes, dynamic or interactive, but uh, we usually hear dynamic, which, but which means still uh, that, you know, our website is dynamic and there's, you know, a lot more that is going to go into to, um, that. So we also have uh, a web browser, which is like a client. We have uh, a web server as well, just like this, right? We have a browser, a server, we have a request and a response, but things don't end here. Okay, things don't end with, you know, HTML, uh, you know, uh, with HTML returned as a response, okay? We have a lot more uh, things that need to be done before uh, things can be returned back to the client. Uh, so basically that, you know, the whole page is not going to be um, dynamic. Parts of the page are going to be dynamic. Okay, as you will later discover, uh, you know, this particular code here is going to be uh, required, you know, uh, it's going to contain, for example, a request. If you maybe have uh, a page with all your friends list, uh, this code is going to be, um, let's say it's on Facebook, you have, you know, uh, a, you know a panel with, you know, all your friends. Uh, to get that, uh, this code is going to be you know, uh, going to this other layer, which is called the application server. Uh, this server is going to be written in a programming language like Python or um, JavaScript or PHP or Ruby or, uh, you know, any other language that, you know, can be used on the backend that can write uh, a server application. Uh, so it's going to do that. It's going to, uh, sorry. So this code, right? This piece of code is going to be requ requiring some information. Maybe you want to add a new user, you're following someone, okay? And they need to appear on the list of, you know, uh, the people you follow, right? This application server is going to handle, uh, this request is going to come with, um, this uh, is going to come with, you know, the, the logic necessary uh, to, uh, it's going to come, you know, with the commands, right? It's going to request the, the application server, which has all the logic that, you know, needs to be run. Uh, if, you know, there's calculation, maybe on the numbers of uh, users, for example, you, you're following on a particular, maybe social media website, like Facebook or something, it's going to be containing that and it's going to run all those operations and all those logic. Uh, and then if, for example, uh, we need to change a li the list uh, of uh, people we follow uh, in, uh, in a database. We're going to also talk to the database. Uh, there are things that you don't need to worry about, uh, like database drivers, for example, 
you know, but just know that there's going to be a web server uh, which has you know an application, um, and this application is going to have the the logic. So this is where you write all your all, all your logic, and this application is going to be talking to, to the database, maybe adding uh, you know adding uh, items in the database or removing them or you know requesting them to be displayed on the page. Then this database is going to be returning something. Uh, you know, a message that, you know, things are, you know, registered uh, successfully, or uh, let's say if you request um, some information from the database, it's going to be returning that, and then it's going to give it back to the application server, and this application server is going to know what to do, uh, and it's going to be maybe inserting a list of uh, data from the database, you know, here, okay, so this is the dynamic part, okay, and Every time we make this request, you know, depending on who's making the request, maybe different users, it's going to be returning different data, like different uh, friends list, and then it's going to be returning that back to the client. Okay, so all these all these operations, uh, the things that make an application a web application dynamic. Okay, but today we're not learning how to make. Uh, okay, usually this things that are from here up to here. So the application server, all this, the database, uh, the logic um, is called backend, um, you know, the backend. And then this is called the front end right here, right? So um, that's, uh, that's basically like the, the, the bigger picture of uh, what's happening in web applications. Any questions before we move on to the second part, which is hosting. I can check. Check. Yes, thank you, Dodos. Uh, what, what is the role of data, uh, the role of database query? The part, mm -hmm. what is the use of the database driver? All right. So uh, basically the query is, um, let's say for example, if you uh, uh, you have this page, uh, this page that loads in a browser, for example, it's, uh, for example, let's say facebook.com slash uh, my friends. Okay, there's, you know, a route like that. Uh, it's going to be uh, a page in HTML. If you are uh, opening it in a browser, uh, most likely it's going to be HTML. And then there's going to be some dynamic code. This dynamic code is going to be uh, talking to this application server or be part of the application server. Uh, in some way. And then uh, what this is going to do is going to say, okay, now I'm going to need a list of friends for this person, all right? And it's going to determine, okay, who's this person? Are they logged in? Yes. Uh, do they have um, the, the rights to request this data they are you know, trying to request from the database? Yes or no, then they return um, you know, an error. Or if yes, then they compose a query, they make, some query, a query is like a request, okay? They make a request to the database, right? And then the database returns the list of friends, right? Like that record in the database, right? And then uh, the list of your friends are going to be displayed, okay? So since uh, I, hope, I hope that, you know, the query part is uh, understandable, uh, a query is just a request uh, from the application server to the database. All right, uh, it's, it's usually called a database query. Okay, and then um, the, uh, the database driver, you don't need to worry about that. It's like uh, another kind of like, you know, uh, application or like something that stands between the query um, and a database. Uh, let's say this might be written in PHP um, and uh, you know, PHP needs to be able to talk to, uh, let's say if it's, you know, my SQL or uh, MongoDB, the database, uh, this application needs to be able to talk to this and something that stands in between is uh, the, the database driver. But um, the, that's just like an idea you need to understand, you know, just so you need to have in your head so that you understand the whole flow of, uh, you know, all of this, right? Uh, but since we're not focusing on this right now, or focusing on this, HTML and CSS, 
uh, you are going to only need to understand this. And this is just to give you like a whole overview of, you know, how different, you know, aesthetic websites or uh, is different uh, from the uh, dynamic ones. I hope that clears up uh, things. Um, yeah, an example of a static website. Uh, let's let's find one. Um, let's find a static website. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Like uh, any portfolio websites, usually. Um, let me see. Anyone who wants to give us an example of a static website? Mic check. Like anything that has information. Uh -huh. Yes, you can see, uh, you can look at the, the website for, for Sonargua, the, the, the insurance All right. company. All right, Sonargua. Yeah, sonargua.co.rw, for example. Yeah, so, um, you know, they could have carousels and everything, but, you know, it's still only information on this website. It's just, uh, you know, they're not, you know, let's say registering users and, you know, uh, doing, you know, a lot of things. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, it doesn't even look that good. Uh, usually like these companies will have like, you know, terrible, uh, looking websites. Uh, look at the contrast on this, like this dark red and black. Uh, but this uh, is actually an opportunity for you know anyone if you have like to make like a redesign of uh, you know this website and you know go talk to them if you know someone from there. You know, it's a uh, it's an opportunity. But uh, this is just you know um, you know an example of a uh, of a website which is static. There's nothing uh, happening. There's um, you know, if they, when they're going to update, for example, um, when they're going to update, uh, you know, particular pages, they just do it, uh, you know, they just upload a new website uh, using, you know, different tools that, you know, we might be able to see later on, okay? Uh, so uh, usually uh, something called FTP, uh, that's usually how they do it. And if you see something that says, uh, I just saw something that says PHP, it's not like there's a back end to it. It's just that, uh, for example, this one. Uh, so it's, uh, it's usually because, um, you know, uh, some of the, the old uh, hosting options uh, required you to have, uh, you know, uh, that setup, right? So, uh, yeah, that's an example. Uh, and, you know, Jean-Charles asks, uh, when do we use the term web application or uh, just a website? So a web application is, you know, usually for me, when it's dynamic, it's a web application. When it's a static website, when it's static, uh, Francis and Eva, please meet your mics. All right, cool. So when it's when it's static and it's not doing anything more than you know the, the just a website. Let's say if it has like a form, if it has you know more interactivity, we might call it uh, you know a web app or something. But if it's just static and you know there's nothing else, there's no interactivity. You can you know even submit a form or something like that. Uh, you know it, it, it's not it, there's no logic maybe to handle the form and maybe do something else, or maybe like send an email to the owners or something like that, then um, that's static. But a web, uh, a web app, it's usually like things like Google, um, you know, any, anything that has a backend and it's going to be uh, talking to uh, a server and a database, it's usually a web app. That's at least in my opinion, right? So, uh, I think that's it. I will take more questions uh, later on. Uh, but for now, I want us to, in a second. Uh, for now, I want us to be 
able to uh, know our options. Like, what do we have as options to host uh, a web application? Uh, and uh, give me a second. To host a web application. Uh, Levy said uh, at the beginning, he said that, you know, um, web hosting uh, is, you know, these, uh, uh, like the action of, uh, you know, talking to these online uh, hosting providers to be able to put our websites uh, on um, uh, online, right, to be globally accessible. Uh, but I don't completely agree because sometimes we do it ourselves and we have something called on-premise. On-premise uh, is one of the options. And, um, you know, we can also use something called, uh, you know, hosting providers. Uh, these are the, the guys that, you know, Levy was talking about, but we can also use other providers, other special kind of providers uh, that are called uh, cloud uh, providers. Uh, and we're going to be looking at those, uh, you know, uh, in the, the next few slides. Then we'll take an example, uh, like we'll, you know, have a website and host it uh, here on the call. And uh, I think that would be it uh, for the day. So uh, to begin with, uh, the first option is on-premise. On-premise, uh, you know, it, it usually depends on like what, what you want to host. Is it a static website? Is it a dynamic website? This is a way you decide if you know you want to go with on-premise, if you want to uh, use cloud or hosting providers. Okay, so basically on prem on premise, uh, you're going to have to buy the servers, buy the the actual servers. Uh, a server is basically just a computer which is connected to the internet and is always on and available, and you know. Uh, just up and running all the time so that people can uh, actually, um, you know, uh, access the website or the web application uh, when they need to, whenever they need to, okay? So um, that's number one, right? You, you're going to have to buy the actual servers. Next, you're going to have to set up the actual servers. Usually uh, uh, the, the the servers are set up by using um, the uh, Ubuntu server. Uh, some apps, you know, some use Windows uh, server, but uh, most of the like the majority of the internet is on uh, Ubuntu. This is uh, Linux, uh, and maybe you'll be learning more about that as you progress through uh, the coding career, right? And you'll know how to maybe set up uh, some of those servers as well, right? And, uh, but you have them physically, you have like, you know, uh, this shelf or a rack, you have like two or three servers up and running and, you know, you have the power to them. Uh, you have, uh, if you, they get hot, cause they usually tend to get hot. Uh, you need to also be able to, uh, you know, have the cooling systems and everything, uh, you know, available for you. Uh, you also need to buy hard drives. Uh, usually they're not even hard drives these days. People use uh, solid state drives uh, for uh, better performance and uh, less risk. Uh, so you're going to have like, to buy storage uh, since like if you have like uh, people uh, uploading images, for example, on Google Drive, uh, they, they need to have storage, okay? Uh, if you have people uploading, you know, uh, videos of cats and dogs on Instagram, you need to have storage, okay? So uh, if you need that, depending on, you know, what kind of storage you need, you might need a terabyte, you might need 12, you're not, you might need 100. Uh, it's, uh, it's all up to you. Uh, then you're going to have, you know, networking. You're going to have internet. You're going to have, uh, you know, external networking and internal networking. Uh, you know, how, um, how is it set up uh, if you access this port or that port, is it going to be accessible? Uh, you know, uh, let's say, uh, can we even map it to uh, a domain name server uh, so that we can have like a name instead of, you know, an IP address for that uh, server, right? Uh, you're going to need uh, to think about, you know, 
data, uh, how are we handling data? Uh, you know, are people are going to be uh, able to access data? You know, do we have backup for data? Do we have security, you know, physical and cyber, everything, right? If people, if you have like more users, are we able to scale uh, our setup? Okay, so all these are the things you need to worry about when you have on-premise um, servers or if you host on-premise. On-premise on usually means, you know, you have this whole building and this building, uh, you know, let's say uh, inside of Google, for example, they have uh, maybe a whole flow of servers, maybe in the, um, in the, uh, uh, in the, in the sub levels, and then they they run everything there. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's basically on premise. And then uh, you can also choose to run your to host your application with the hosting companies. Uh, these are you know the uh, companies I was able to come up with. Uh, you know that can host for you. One is A2 Hosting, Bluehost, SiteGround, HostGator. Uh, I've personally used Bluehost and uh, HostGator, uh, but they're usually uh, the same. And these are usually used to host uh, um, WordPress websites. At least that's, that's what I was doing. Uh, so uh, web, WordPress websites, uh, websites that are not complicated and you know you don't need to uh, worry about a lot of things. You just host them. Uh, with these companies, right? And uh, these can do um, anything that you want. Uh, okay, so here on premise, you can host anything that you want, uh, be it, um, you know, uh, static or dynamic, same as here, uh, depending on how you set it up, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be able to run your websites. Uh, and, you know, it depends on basically like you need to do uh, some research so that you know what's best for me, right? Uh, you know, am I going to need to, uh, you know, uh, have like an engineer who is going to be, um, you know, tasked to, to be maintaining this? Uh, you know, do I have to, you know, have a security guard? Do I have to, uh, do I have like stable internet? Uh, all those things are going to matter a lot in making a decision. Right, uh, and another thing, uh, you know, wh when you talk about hosting companies, uh, that's uh, our friend said talked about, you know, shared hosting and dedicated hosting. Uh, so shared hosting, basically, this is like a server. Uh, a server is like just one rack, sorry, like just one server in a rack, and this server can have multiple sites. Right, uh, you can have a site there and I can have a site on this same same uh, server, right? And it's set up by them, maintained by them, but I can host, I can take part of it and host my website on it. And this is usually for small websites and um, static websites usually, uh, but you can also rent a server, which is going to be more costly. And, um, and it's going to have your website, only your website. This is called dedicated hosting and this is called shared hosting. Uh, shared hosting is what usually people do on these companies. Uh, and uh, the third one is, not, uh, is called VPS hosting. This is when they give you, um, you know, they give you the, uh, you know, you can, they give you like the options to set up, to set up and maintain your servers. Uh, and depending on how much you want to take, how much this space you need, you might take one, two or three uh, and pay for them. If you don't do anything with them, it's up to you. If you do it, you know, you know if you overload them, then it's also up to you. So uh, this is what VPS hosting is, but uh, you need to be able to uh, go in, you know, set up everything and have the environment ready. But these are usually uh, already set up uh, for you most of the times. Right, or they have like like a simple solution to just you just click and you have everything uh, ready for you. All right. So um, the third part is called the cloud. Uh, you you will hear this as uh, the cloud or cloud computing or uh, different other terms, uh, but this is basically um, anything that uh, you know 
seems kind of like automatic. Uh, there's really no cloud, uh, if you think about it. Uh, it's just always servers somewhere, but uh, they take most of the, uh, all these companies, they take most of the work, you know, outside of your uh, uh, worries. And, you know, you only worry about, you know, the application are developing, you know, if it runs well, that there are no errors and stuff like that. And they just give you, uh, you know, a solution for you, ready-made. You don't need to worry about a lot, a lot, a lot of things uh, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, hosting. For example, uh, if you saw, uh, if you saw all of this, these are the things that you don't need to worry about. Uh, it's like on premise, but without all, all of these hassle. Um, and you just click up uh, a button, and you have more. And you, they're usually, um, you know, charging you on the usage, not uh, on. You know, you don't just buy a server somewhere and sit and forget it. You just they just uh, bill you uh, every month based on uh, the 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 amount of resources you used, right? And this is basically um, you know, it's basically the, like the future. And there are different ways that, you know, someone can host on the cloud. And um, yeah, so the, let me maybe read through the list. Um, you know, the first one is uh, AWS. Uh, this is Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, and um, yeah, the, the next one is called GCP. And uh, it's called, uh, in, in long, it's a Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and, you know, both, you know, AWS, GCP, Microsoft Azure, Alibaba Cloud, they are all uh, owned by, you know, these big companies and, you know, they have like a different, you know, a reputation and tools that you can use to do pretty much everything that you want to do uh, in the cloud, which is usually, uh, let's say, uh, you need a database, they, they provide it for you, you need uh, storage, they provide it for you, you need, um, you know, different solutions, even things that you would not think about, they will definitely have them uh, ready for you to use, okay? Uh, this is the same as, uh, you know, these two, I haven't personally used uh, these, but uh, they're also options, okay? And, um, you know, there's, there's much, much, much more, okay? And these are usually uh, paid and they have, you know, free tiers, like you can get something up on uh, GCP, very easy for free, right? And, um, uh, you know, it's a, uh, you can just maybe like Google, like uh, something like uh, Firebase, uh, Firebase hosting, and you'll see that you can even host your simple website on there. Okay. And, uh, you know, these are, oops. Okay. Right. So these are called, uh, I'm going to like, uh, give you like suggestions, like if you want to host uh, a website, uh, like what can you think about? Like you don't need to go to AWS to host a simple website. Uh, these, um, you know, options that you can use, um, you know, uh, free for development, uh, but also like uh, easier to use uh, than those other options. So the first one is called Heroku. This is usually when you have like a Node.js application or, you know, a backend app, uh, you can host it here. Uh, you know, you can host anything that's, you know, relatively um, bigger and maybe it needs, uh, you know, a, an environment to run uh, in, like you need to install some, some dependencies uh, and things like that. You can use Heroku. Uh, things, let's say, like if you have a React app, you can host it here. If you have a Node.js app, if you have a Python app, you can host it on, her, on Heroku, okay? Then the next one is called Verso. Uh, this is very uh, easy to use and we'll be able to see some of these uh, as we explore. And then there's uh, one called Sarge. Uh, so Sarge SH is usually used for, um, you know, uh, fr front end. Uh, that's what I use them for, but it's like very easy to use and uh, you can just get something up and running very, very quickly and easily. Uh, Netlify is another uh, option. Uh, Stormkit, I haven't used Stormkit before today, but today I tried it and it's, you know, uh, very, very easy to use it. 
Uh, and we also have GitHub pages. GitHub has an option for you to host, but this is basically static website. Uh, it doesn't host uh, dynamic websites, okay? Unless if you trick it and you only uh, do everything uh, and uh, you know on the on the side and you just inject them maybe on a static site, okay? But usually they're just uh, static uh, pages that they're going to be able to host for you. Yeah, that's uh, basically it. Uh, and um, I'd like to take a question, uh, a question or two. Otherwise, we're going to be uh, starting to host at least, we're going to create a page and we're going to host it on you know a few of these and uh, uh, we'll see how we do with that. Any thank questions? You. I'll take two questions, yes? Uh, thank you. I would like you to know there's a freedom if I the web if I the web hoster you can host your website about which is for free. Yes, uh, they all these we are talking about web hosting and we're going to use some of these to host um, you know applications. Okay, we're going to do okay. that. Okay, yeah. the second question is that when you create a a blog or a website using a free application like Wix. Mm. And the Wix can, uh, can stay one year, one year or two years without paying some amount of money. Means that your mm. website, all your blog is still hosting. Anyone can access in everywhere he or she is. Also, the Wix can be considered as a freedom application it hosts to your website. Um, okay, so Wix is not uh, part of this. Uh, Wix is, uh, you know, something called uh, WYSIWYG, right? WYSIWYG basically means, um, you know, what you see is what you get. Uh, and uh, these are different tools that you can use uh to just you know drag and drop uh you know to be able to have a website uh and you just create everything by dragging and dropping different elements uh on a page okay uh so weeks um what's the other uh weeks and uh even wordpress has you know some week uh week tools uh that you can use like you just drag things around uh, and if you want a button, you just look for a button and drag it to a different, to a certain place and you, you have it, okay? That's not, WYSIWYG is not uh, front-end development. Uh, it's, yes, it's a way of making websites, but it's not uh, what we're learning here. We're learning how do we create that button? How do we make it red? Uh, you know, how does it work? And when we are, we've made it in the, in the browser, then how do we go ahead and take that? and uh, put it online and have it accessible uh, you know, via internet, just like our friend said. Okay, means that you cannot take the blog you create with these apps and you host it using the freemium apps. No, the, 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 I said freemium because uh, it's not like they are free to use, uh, just they are kind of free for some time and uh, you can also like for some time or, you know, to a certain point, you know, uh, you know, in, in terms of usage, but um, they're not even called like freemium. freemium, a freemium means something which is free. Like it has like a free version, like, I mean, a free tier uh, around it. And uh, it's basically uh, used to mean that, okay, you can use these uh, just to develop and you know be able to see a website online okay right, easily all right uh, let me see just give me a second uh, I've been, I was having trouble okay
All right. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, creating um, a simple web page, and we're going to be hosting it. Um, I don't know if uh, there's any other question that needs to be answered, like very quickly. Uh, and um, we'll do that. And uh, before we continue, let's see. I'm going to be creating uh, a new project, uh, HTML, CSS project. Uh, let's call it uh, hosting. Let's call it hosted. Right. And, right, and we're going to be opening it in VS Code. Right, uh, so here's our, um, here's our project. And we're going to be adding index.html. Uh, uh, and we're just going to put in like the, the boilerplate. All right, so. Let's just have a uh, natural, let's say, hosted. And uh, just for the sake of, uh, you know, making sure that even like if you have styles that are going to be working, let's have uh, main.css here. And we're going to be, um, let's run this, see how it looks. Uh, this is usually what you would do. Uh, if you're going to be right, so if you're going to be uh, creating a site, this is what you would do, right? This is what we've been doing uh, for the past week. Uh, so let's bring this over here. All right. Cool. So um, we are going to be uh, styling the page just a little bit so that you know it's uh, distinguishable. We're going to maybe go to uh, let's say uh, let's reset everything. Uh, padding. The, okay, so the reason I usually reset is usually because of the margins. Let me show you. I'm going to make the body background color. Uh, let's make it black. Right. And we are going to be importing this inside of here. Uh, link CSS, and then it's going to be main the CSS. Right. So the page is black and uh, yeah, so since, let me say, uh, color of the text is going to be white. Let's make it green. Color is going to be, let's say green. All right, so uh, we're going to do that and uh, let's change the font family to, um something let's choose one of these do we have ubuntu no um right let's make it uh that one korea um and we're going to uh let's see just want to show you like the borders uh, around this. So border. Right, so you can already see uh, there's like, you know, some pixels that are, you know, being eaten here, for example. Okay, so that are, you know, 
there's uh, like a, a margin around this uh, and um, usually like a padding around the H1. So for all the elements, I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing the padding zero uh, and the padding of zero and the margin of zero. All right, and then I'm going to do a box sizing, box sizing to border box. And uh, we'll have something a bit more different. Uh, give me a sec, I need to change my headphones. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Yes, you can see the VS Code and the, and the browser. Awesome, awesome. All right. So um, basically, this is what I wanted to do, uh, and all I want to do is just you know to send it, to center this in here. Uh, and what I can do, I can just use Flexbox. Uh, I can just just style it from the body display of Flex, and I can just do justify content uh, center, and actually uh, I can just say. Uh, align items center uh, but then again i'm going to need to have this um you know the height is going to be um 100 ph and then uh, i just do text align center h1 Uh, let me do align to align self work here. Let me see. Align self center. No, I have to do text align. No, it's a black one. Can someone tell me why uh, this is not being centered? Because this was usually supposed to be, uh, unless if I make it, give it a, a container. Anyway, um, let me see. Uh, um, Justify content center. You can add it. In yeah, but but it's, it's uh is it going to is it like align items oh, no 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 oh, okay i mean i meant i meant align content is it align content align content center no okay let me just use uh just by content and align items This keyboard is playing with me. All right, so we have our justify content center and align just align items and align item center center. All right, so let's remove this. All right. And um, let's change this to something um, nicer. Let's say hack with HTML six. Right. And we can make this a bit bigger and we can make this uh, one size. We don't even need this. Uh, we can just, uh, oh, okay. Let's, let's do that font size and maybe 1.5 M. Okay, maybe 2 M. 
three M. Why well, it's a bit bigger, right? Um, okay. Okay, so this is our website, uh, and uh, it's hopefully going to be looking nice on smaller screens. E okay, let's add um, let's add uh, a padding, a padding of um, twenty pixels, forty pixels, right? So that if we no, go on smaller screens, it's going to keep the padding on the sides. Okay. And we can actually do align, justify, no, align, uh, text align, text align, center, just to center it like so. Okay. So uh, this is all the styles that we're going to be writing and we have our file here. Okay. So using some of these uh, tools that we saw, okay, we're going to be hosting this website and let me open this uh, in, uh, let me see. Mm -mm. So we have, uh, sorry guys, it's, uh, it's starting to rain right here. Uh, let me see if I can, uh, I don't know if you guys can still hear me, but it's raining uh, where I am. Uh, so, okay. So I'm going to be choosing a few of these, uh, you know, to host our website with, okay. So we can start maybe with uh, something like, I think what is here. I think search is very, very easy if you want to get a website online. Uh, so I'll start with search. Maybe uh, go ahead and start, uh, you know, continue with uh, StormKit. So search, StormKit, um, Netlify, and then GitHub pages, okay? So I'll do search and then someone else on the call is going to do GitHub pages. Um, then I'll do StormKit and someone else is going to do Netlify. Uh, we're just going to, just have fun with this and uh, yeah so let's uh can you guys still see my screen can you still yes. see my screen yeah yes. awesome yeah. cool yes all right uh, let's get this out of the way okay so this is already on our local um is on our local uh server uh, what we're going to do is uh, go to search, uh, search, search the sh, sh, right? So search the sh. This is uh, how it works. Uh, for you to be able to use this, you're going to need to have Node installed. Okay. Uh, if you don't know what Node is, you can just go on nodejs.org um, and you'll be able to download it and, uh, you know, be able to use it, okay? So nodejs.org, uh, this is how you're going to be able to do this. To do this. And uh, this is the only thing they're going to need to do. This is the only complicated part. Other than that, it's just doing these two commands and you are ready to go. To make sure that you have not installed, uh, you're going to have uh, to do something like, okay, in VS Code, you can actually, let me, I just used uh, a, a shortcut. You can just go on terminal and do, click on new terminal. It will open up a terminal for you right here in the root of the project. Uh, already, you know, change directory into the current uh, project that you have, okay? So to do this, to check if you have node, you just write node uh, dash dash version, right? Or node v, I guess, node v also works. So this is the node version I have, uh, but depending on the version you download, you might download 16.7, you might download 14.17. I have 14.16. Um, this is the only thing that you need to check. And uh, this, if this works, uh, this one is also going to uh, definitely work. So NPM version, right? So 
once you have uh, you know npm installed and nodes installed the next thing that you're going to be doing is actually uh running these commands okay so the first one is going to be npm install uh global search okay but you can also do uh something called npx uh, where you don't have to run this first command you just run this uh with npx uh at the beginning right so you can do npx search right and this is going to be hosting a website uh, just right here in the terminal. Uh, it's going to be asking me, do you, you know, is this the project that I want to uh, that I want to host? If you're not logged in, it's going to be asking you to log in. You just put in an email and a password, and that's it. Okay. Uh, then uh, say yes. That's uh, hitting enter. Uh, and this is the domain. What domain do we want? Uh, let's say hack to the HTML. Hack check. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to know why did you start by host it? You first of all, you open your terminal and the, before to start the the, the page, web page. Mm -hmm. First of all, you write, you open it like a terminal or CMD and you type host it. Why? Um, I was creating a folder called hosted. And Hosted. this, this, yes. This is a folder. Uh, I run a, a command. Let me show you. Let me show you an example right here. So an example is if I write, I wrote mkdir. So like make directory, and then I put a name here. Let me say images, right? If I do this inside of this, uh, you know, this uh, folder here called hosted, which is this one, it's going to be showing us, you know, a new folder called images, right? This is the same as doing this. Let's say CSS, right? So I can delete this and create it in the terminal, right? Yeah. So the same thing, I just deleted that. I can write another command and you can delete this. Uh, for example, rm-rf, then images, right? Then it's gone. Okay, so this is, these are just uh, commands. Like These are like the basic commands in, you know, using Linux, uh, Linux or, um what mac or even i think you have them also in powershell and uh, git bash they might be slightly different for windows but they're usually the same for linux and uh mac all right so um so, so your 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 vs code terminal displays names of directories in lower cases because hmm? here it is hosted in a Oh, okay. The confusion. No, 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 no. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you. So the thing is, uh, because this is like, uh, it's the same as this, like open editors. Like there's nothing like open editors. This is just a name uh, of the, ah, the project yes, that I have yes. open. So if I create this, uh, if I say make there, uh, say okay. image. Understood. Like okay. that. It's going to to create one called images. Okay. Mm. It's, it's, it's uh, Mm, yeah, it's just because it's the open project. Yeah. All right, so this is it. Okay, so um, let me exit out of this. So basically, you write the name of the project that you, that you want. You can write any name that you want, but they're usually going to suggest you a name. You can take it or, you know, write whatever you want to write. Okay, so let's say hacked uh, with HTML6. Let me do underscore uh, act with my check. 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 How to install NPM? Uh, How to when, install NPM? When, when you install Node, it will also install NPM for you. Okay. So you go on nodejs.org, like yeah, so, you. and you download for uh, whatever system you are using, if it's Linux, if it's Windows, if it's Mac, uh, you see it here. Uh, whatever you open with, you will see it here and it will be the default, okay? So you can see whatever you want. So Windows installer, Mac installer, source code, whatever you want to use, okay? So once you install Node, it will also install NPM, okay? So now we have our project already published. So you run NPX search, and you just have your um, 
page here and then let's see if it works. So we have um, this add to the HTML6. Let's see if it opens. All right. You can also open this uh, on your phones uh, and uh, you see that, let me send it in the chat. You can open on your systems and you see that this is a page. And then you can give this to, let's say a client or uh, you know, any, anyone who wants to, uh, who wants to you know, have a page. For example, like if you are creating like a portfolio, you can call it, let's say, whatever, like my, whatever, like maybe your name or something like that. And then maybe dash portfolio or something like that. Uh, you know, whatever name you want to use for this. Okay, so that okay. is one done. Uh -huh. uh, I would like to ask, um, you've provided the email and the password. Mm -hmm. That those are for which your Gmail accounts or maybe something is I don't know. Dodo, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, guys. I was I was telling you guys when you run npx search dash dash help, it's going to give you different commands that you can run. For example, to show uh, who you are logged in as, uh, to you know log out, to log in. Okay, so search login, uh, and um, you know you can tear down you know tear down a published project. Uh, you can set you know, an account plan, if you want to upgrade, you can do that, okay? So all these things that, you know, you can, you can, uh, I can even add collaborators or remove them, right? So um, for example, one of the co uh, commands is, you know, list, listing all your domains that you have on search, uh, you know, you run search list, and then these are everything. This is the one we just created. So if I take, for example, this one, it's from four years ago, I don't know what I had on here. Let's let me open this and see if it still runs. It might take a while because it's uh well, it's been a while. It's been four years. Uh, so this is uh my portfolio from uh four years ago, right? So uh yeah, this is basically it, and it will still have you know everything that you know you put on there for however long that you keep them there. Okay. Right. Let's not look at my, port, my old portfolio anymore. All right. So uh, whatever that you have, uh, whatever, you know, uh, whatever you have on here, this is another one from like four years ago as well. Um, so it will, it will stay here. Uh, any, any questions? I check. Check. Uh, means that you use, use search to, for hosting. Yes, we are using search to host. That's what we're doing. Uh, okay, when you have many uh, web pages in one folder, uh -huh. you're supposed to host only one page. Yes, you because the pages are interconnected. If you have- Suppose uh, that you have many, many web pages which are- Let's, let's do it. 
let's do it. So we have about, right? We have a uh, contact. Okay, so inside of here, in contact, we have index HTML. And inside about, we have another index HTML. Okay, so in here, we're going to have, uh, let's say, for example, let's copy everything inside of here, copy it and uh, paste in here. It will probably break, uh, but let's do that because uh, we need to go up a folder and then main the CSS. Yes, and save that. And we need to also go up a folder. Do you know why we're going up a folder in, uh, inside of here? No, this is, this is the wrong one. I need this one. Do you know why we're going up a folder? No. In, no, okay, let's, let's try to run this, okay? So we go on, uh, let's get this out of the way. Okay, so if you go on, so yeah, we run this, it's running, but if you go on, you know, uh, about, right, it's going to work, right? Let me, let me show you how, you know, that it's uh, the about act with, let's say, about. Uh, about HTML6, for example, it's going to change to that, okay? So if I go on contact, let's see how it, it does contact. There's no styles, okay? To show you that, I'm going to change this contact, contact the pre HTML6. You're going to see that, okay? But since this, this CSS, the reference is wrong, it means that you know, we want uh, you know, this main CSS to be inside of contact. That's what it means, okay? So we need to reference it the right way. Okay, so we go upper folder dot dot slash, then we have access to all of this. So we go main dot CSS. Okay, then when we do that, it's going to- Why two, our, Why two dots? This is a, a command, uh, this is a Linux command. Uh, for example, if you wanted to go up a folder in here, you Even you do, can use it for more web page. Yes, so if we, sorry. So if you were going to, if you're trying to go up a folder in here, we would do dot dot slash, okay? Or we can just do dot dot and it's going to go up a folder in here. So if you do, uh, <laughs> PW, this, this is like showing us where we are. So we can also like go up a folder and it's going to, you know, go in there. Okay. You know, go up a folder. If you do PWD again, you see that things are, you know, things are, you know, now like going up a folder, up a folder. But if you do it again, right, it's going to, you're going to see, you know, the difference. So we started on, you know, uh, slash hosted. We went to users dot dot, and then we went to users, and then we went to, you know, home. Okay. So what we, we can do is actually uh, go to hosted. Right. So uh, exactly. So this is basically it. So this is uh, dot dot is the command that says, okay, go up a folder. So we can go like many folders behind. So you can, for more, uh, for re more reference, like better reference on this, you can uh, look for um, internet is hard. Um, let me show you internet is hard. Um, I think I shared this with you guys. So HTML, CSS, this that's basic web pages here and restructure links. Uh, uh, 
and I think it's on the on the next one. I think um, links. Yeah, so you can come here on links. You learn about absolute relative root relative links, right? This uh, will uh, help you learn more about links and why we do that. And it's still the same idea, really. Like, how do you reference different files uh, in your uh, HTML? Right. So this is it. Uh, this is Serge, and this is our website uh, here. Our questions? Before we maybe use the next one, and then um, we get uh, mic check. Check. Yeah, thank you, Dodo. Uh, the last question I have is that when you do everything, you finish mm. to design your website or your mm. web page, mm. and you you can you host with such it can it can spend a long time for the server everyone can access it but cannot yes. yeah now if you uh, need to add something you mm. come back on the web page to add mm. ah okay let's 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 see so since we have this uh this right here let's create um a ul right uh let's have a lives uh, and inside here i have an a tag that goes to, um, let's go to slash about. Then we'll duplicate this. We'll go to slash contact, right? And we we'll call this about, and we we'll call this um, contact. Right? And this is, uh, this is basically like the same thing. So. Uh, since we have, oops, this is the one online. Let's do that. We have our links, but they're not showing. We need to style them a little bit. All right, so we need our main. And then we'll style the UL a bit. UL um, and this uh, say let's style allies. <laughs> allies. You know, it's the A's inside of allies. We can just do uh, A's. Mm. Let's make it this color. And maybe the font size. Let's see. Let's see. Hmm. All right, let's see. Oh, we are on contact. Oh, oh. oh. my goodness. Okay. So we have our we have our thing here, and uh, all of these you know our UL and uh, our body will do flex um, uh, flex direction uh, of uh, column, right? So that we have things you know on top of each other, and yeah. So on and on these pages we have uh, you know a link that goes. Um, no. Okay, we have a UL. Okay, let's have let's have a NATO and let's uh make it go home and call it 
Uh, let's put an emoji here. So some. Uh, so uh, on this page and this one, we have that and right. So when you click on this, it's going to go home. Okay. So uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is uh, with our CSS, we can just come here and remove uh, this border uh, list style none none and uh, allies this. You can just do um, uh, text decoration of none as well. So we have our links here, and we can actually like maybe like add hovers uh, just to make sure it's a uh, color becomes. Green. Right. So when you hover over this, it becomes green. And then you go to contact. Yes. You go to about. Yes. So this is an update that we just did. Okay. And you know we are happy about it. And if you're using Git, we would be tracking it with Git, which is the next step that we're going to be doing. So we just you know use GitHub pages, and you have like a homework to maybe try out Netlify or Verso something like that okay um yeah so to to update that what do we do again we just do npx search and since it's registered to this project it's going to um host it again so as you can see our search project here doesn't have links okay yeah it doesn't have links but once it's done uh, but you need to, uh, you know, point it to the right um, link here of search because we have, uh, you know, many different names, you know, different project of search. So we need to point it to the right one. And it's going to host, I mean, to push it. And once it's done, when we refresh, it's going to give us uh, our, this is already like, if you open that link on your phone, it's going to work. Right. And it's going to go here and our home emoji is here and we are good, okay? So this is how we use search, okay? Um, another one we're going to have to look at. So please, I don't uh -huh. see how you, I don't see how you, you update the, you update the link you, you host. I just did it here. So you just run NPX search again, and then you give it the right, because this is the name of the project, you give it the right uh, the right name of the project. Okay, let's say for example, we want to change this color from green. Green looks uh, bad. We want to change it to something like uh, yes. yellow, for example. Okay, so we just come here. We write our yellow to the links, right? Um, let's say, oops, I don't even know. Yellow, right? Uh, okay, let's do yellow so that uh, <clears throat> we can see the difference. Right, so once we have this, we come here, right, and pick search. And then we, they suggest us a new name. Uh, they think it's a different project, uh, but we say yes, it's this, but need to come here and delete this name they are giving us as a suggestion and we'll just paste in the name that we have hacked, hacked with html6 okay and we just paste this still green still green once we refresh it's going to be yellow like you see this is how you do it right and this is a static website Right, so uh, this is one option. I'm not going to go back to search though. 
Uh, I'm going to host with uh, GitHub pages and we're going to be uh, ending it there, okay? So uh, one thing that we need to do first, um, let's say uh, GitHub pages. So this is a way that you can host your uh, website on GitHub and you can uh, actually uh, go to pages.github.com and you read all about uh, GitHub pages, everything, okay? So now all we need to do is to, you know, make this, usually like you don't do this without Git. Um, you, what we need to do is, um, uh, we're going to be uh, initializing this project with Git in it. And we're going to do Git status to see what we have. We're going to Git add all, we're going to do a commit, git commit dash M. Uh, the message is going to be initial uh, commit. Yes, and then we're going to be uh, creating a repo on GitHub. Um, right, oops. Okay, so sorry about that. I'm going to go on new repo and uh, we'll create a new repo. We call it hacked uh, with uh, HTML6. Uh, and then we make it public. We create a repo. And then these are the steps that we took last time. So we take this um, right here, uh, this link, and we run. Oops, oh my goodness. Uh, sorry guys, I just lost power. Let me unplug and use my no, no moment. Oh, it's back. Uh, what what do you what do you guys see right now? There is screen is not shareable. Oh, okay. Let me share it again. All right. Um, yeah. So now that you can see it again. Yeah. What we'll do is we do git remote. So if you do git remote dash v, there's nothing. Okay. It means that this is not connected to any repo online. Okay. So what we'll do is git remote uh, add origin, and then we paste the link that we got uh, from GitHub. Uh, let me, I prefer the ones with SSH. Uh, right, uh, but uh, if you're not, if you don't have SSH set up for Git, you can use this HTTPS one. Uh, all right, so when once I do Git, re, Git remote uh, version again, we'll see, um, you know, this, we have push and fetch. Okay, so this will allow us to put this project on GitHub, okay? So what we can do is now we are on the main branch. Branch is called main. And what we can do is create another branch called GH pages, right? We're going to do uh, git checkout. Okay, let's first push this. Let's do git push origin master. No, no, main, then. Um, yeah, sorry, there's, there's uh, these power cuts. Uh, let me use my main screen. Give me a second. Again, screen is not shareable. Mm, yeah, just so I... All right, cool. So I do uh, git push origin main, okay? So once I do that, uh, it's going to push. Uh, for you, it might ask you for a password. Once I refresh this, we're going to see our files here. And um, what I'm going to do is to uh, create another branch, call it, okay, git, uh, uh, git checkout dash p so we're going to check out to a new branch called uh gh uh, pages and we're going to push git push uh, git push origin 
gh pages right so once we do that so um okay it's going to push and then once we do this uh, it's going to have two branches called one called main and another one called gh pages and we're going to go in settings um this is uh basically it we're going to go in settings and we're going to scroll down uh down to gh pages uh All right. Right. So it's here. Uh, used to be uh, in the main ones, but it, it has its own uh, page here. So GH pages are going to take it from GH pages. And since we have this already, uh, it took it uh, by default. And uh, we can already click here and open in a new tab. And we're going to see our project. Okay, so this happens uh, a lot, um, you know, when using GH pages. So we need to change the way uh, the links, uh, you know, because the, the styles are not being applied. So we can navigate, you know, through our pages. Oops. We can navigate through our pages, uh, but uh, let me see. Yes. Right. Uh, we can navigate through our pages, but uh, we we don't have uh, the styles being applied. So you can just check what's wrong. You can inspect and see if the references are not uh, correct. You can already see that the main CSS is not being loaded. Uh, you know, you know, in all the cases. Okay, so you can you can click on it and see um, where it is. Um, main CSS. You see, if we come here, uh, instead of HTML in the head, um, let's see if this will do. Oops. No problem. Okay, so you just change the references to uh you know the, the the css files um that you have and then you'll be good to go okay but as long as this you know you can already see this and uh on this page uh this is going to be uh okay so when we go on about we're also going to see our about for our about the css is working and uh for our uh contacts let's say let's check contact contact it's also working uh but for the root it's not so we're going to have to check this so the way we do it again is you know we can check here it's all right we can close it and go to the home see how we're referencing this so we can add this one i think this is going to be solving it uh let's check if it still works here, all right, so it works. Uh, so we need to uh, push this. So we add, uh, we do, uh, I'm going to use shortcuts, sorry. Uh, I'm going to do uh, git status, we have index.html, and we're going to do git add all, and we're going to do git commit uh, with the message. Uh, I'm going to say uh, update. Update uh, refs. Um, oops, give comments. Right, and then we're going to get to do git push origin uh, gh pages. And uh, once it's done, uh, it probably should work. Uh, let's see. Okay, something is, maybe it's cached or something. Let me see. Uh, oh, four, four, I can't find it. I don't know, it's not finding it. Okay, so you can just play with this. Uh, 
you know, as long as, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, also these links are dead. We need to be like very specific uh, on uh, which pages we're going to. Uh, so it's hard with, you know, HTML6 because I have another website hosted on this, that's why. Uh, so yeah, so basically this is all you need to do, uh, but you can, you can go there like manually, uh, you know, I'll do like that and you see that the, the styles are working, right? So this is how you do it with HTML, I mean, with uh, JHPages. pages. Uh, you can just play with, um, uh, you know, with the, with the uh, refs here, the links. And uh, if you don't have any other websites, it should work uh, perfectly uh, for you. So I'm going to be taking questions uh, by now. Uh, someone in the chat is saying, uh, all right. There are no questions in the chat. Uh, says I'm on the, yeah, I'm on the wrong page. Yes, yes. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, any questions? Any questions on uh, GitHub pages or um, search or hosting in general? Um, Actually, otherwise, we'll go. Mm -hmm. Check. Uh, there are so many questions, but I can summarize in one sentence. Mm. Uh, if possible, you can provide a video that show how you can post the, uh, you can host the, your web page using this method, at least the mm. two methods. It so will yeah. be better for web -ers. Try to mm. make a good video for us. Thank you. Uh, okay, I, I think I'll be sharing this video, this particular video, the recording of this. Uh, but if you want a different video, I don't know about that. Uh, making a video is usually, uh, it takes a, a, you know, a very long time. Uh, so we'll be sharing this and you know, we'll be answering your questions. Uh, but uh, before we close, um, we're going to take questions in the chat. But before we close, I'm going to show you how easy it is to host a website using uh, something called StormKit. StormKit. Okay. Right, so StormKit is one of the cloud uh, providers or serverless uh, providers. Uh, where you can host a website for free easily, right? I used this this morning, to be honest. Uh, I had never used this before today. Okay, so we just click on login uh, and uh, you can log in with whatever, Bitbucket, GitLab, uh, anything you want. And it's going to open something like this. It's going to authorize me and I'm in already, okay? So I'm going to create a new app, okay? Uh, and I'm going to point it, where can, where can we find your code base? It's, it, it has to be online. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, hacked with uh, HTML6. Uh, and it's going to open this as well. It's going to authorize me, uh, but uh, I have to connect more repos. Uh, when I click on that, it's going to be asking me to authorize uh, one of the projects. All right, so you use your GitHub and let me authorize all repos so that, yeah, so that we have all our repos here. Uh, so we just created this one called hacked. So I have to go on H, load more, C, A, G, H. All right, so we have hacked with HTML6. I click on select and it will be loading like my code uh, and you know, to create more applications. Okay, so I can, I can delete, uh, maybe um, I can delete an app here. Uh, let me delete this one. This is the one I, I created uh, this morning. Uh, remove application. Yeah, but for this, you can only create, uh, I guess, two, uh, since uh, uh, that's what they're saying. So, no, delete this. And then, um, the, yeah, so I use GitHub again. Right, so I'll choose a repo. 
So th this is to show you like there are different ways that you can uh, achieve this. You can host our website. Uh, so how to use HTML6 so select. Uh, but there's another one as well called Verso. Um, so the list is long. So since this is done, I can just click on deploy now and uh, say production and then going to um, do main and then just do deploy now. Oops. Okay, so it's going to be running and Right, we can click on this and open it here. How to use HTML6. So we can go, go back, just like that. Okay. So this is uh, the power of you know the internet. So there's a, even another one called Verso. Uh, Verso. Uh, Verso is basically just like uh, Surge. So you can just you know, um, you, know you can you can just uh, uh, you know, use it to uh, to host as well. Uh, so it's just like try to explore, uh, try different uh, ways to host. Um, I, I don't have like you know one of the uh, the the old hosting uh, providers. Maybe like uh, I don't have access to that uh, as of now. But uh, let me see if we can you know import this one. Actually, HTML six. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it, it requires you like to create a team and you know things like that, and you know it. Uh, you know, let's see, configure projects. Let me just do deploy and see if it just does it for us very quickly. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Do we have a link that we can open? Oh yes. Yes, so we can go to dashboard and we can just click on visit and we will visit our website. Okay, so how to with HTML6. You see, like these are different ways. Like to be honest, I'd never used Versa to host before. Okay, but you know, you can see that you know there are different options that you can you know use uh, to to host, and you know, the you know uh, the ease might be different, search requires you to have not these don't don't require you to have not uh, i can you know uh tell you to go find uh netlify um you know try to work with it and see how you can deploy our website you know very very easy as well okay so um yeah i think that's that's basically it if uh, there are any questions i'll take two more questions since we are running out of time and uh we'll end it there um Take two more questions. Okay. You guys have two more questions. Uh -huh. uh, I have two questions. Um, First of all, to ask, um, yeah, you downloaded NetBS to use on. Search. So I wanted to ask if I can download it as an extension on VS Code. Uh, no, no. You need to install Node. Uh, I don't think you can download. I haven't tried, uh, to be honest. But I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a thing you want to do, uh, even because VS Code is just a text editor. Node is, you know, a whole other um, universe uh, compared to yeah. VS Code. So um, actually, VS Code use like uses Node to run things and uh, you know get yeah. you things, but. Uh, you Thank need to you. download it, or if you're using uh, Windows, you can use um, what is it called? I don't even I, I don't I don't remember uh, things anymore for for Windows. But uh, you can use uh, AppGate on Linux. You can use uh, Homebrew for Mac. Uh, you can use um, I, don't, I don't remember how it's called, uh, like the package manager for for Windows uh, to download it if. If it's hard, but if it's not even hard, just download, click a few uh, buttons, and you're there. You wait a few uh, seconds, then it's installed. All right. So someone said, um, "Does search support 
PHP files so that you can have your website be dynamic. We're talking about how to host um, static pages. We haven't created dynamic pages, so we don't worry about that. Okay. Well, we're talking about uh, static pages for now. All right. Um, yeah. Any which which one can you encourage us to use? Tomkit or Netlify? Go Netlify. This is this is the homework. I, I skipped it uh, purposefully. You need to go on Netlify and host. Okay, let, let's make it a challenge, right? In, in challenge three, use Netlify to host. Um, you know, to host it, and try to host challenge one and two on you know maybe Verso or Surge. Anything that is uh, easier for you. Okay. Uh, can you give us more chance to learn web host again, if possible? Thank you. What do you mean, Prince? Uh, this, uh, I thought this was it. Um, for any more, uh, for any more like um, questions, you can ask. You can uh, send them on the chat. You can tag me. You can DM me. Um, preferably DM me if you have questions about it. Uh, but uh, I think for now it's enough. You only have three challenges so far, and you, there's only one left. So there's no need to, I think, like uh, go even deeper. They, yes, we can go deeper, but uh, uh, I think this is uh, this is enough for now. Uh, unless if you have like a specific question that we can answer. Okay. Any other question? No. Okay. So, um, Sam, uh, I think uh, if you don't have any other things to address, uh, we can end the call here. And uh, thank you. Yeah, check. Go back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have another small question. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's possible. Uh, can you return on your, on your time? You know, I didn't mm -hmm. understand. Uh, you created. Uh, yeah, you hosted the page using GitHub. Last two uh, lines. Uh -huh. Yeah, when you which ones? Which a GH which page, the uh, branch. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, yeah, you pushed it as like. This is what I did. GH pages. This is what I did. But this is only just pushing. Yeah. You don't yeah. do anything to host on GH pages. There's nothing you have to do. You just push it on this okay. branch and you point uh, your GitHub uh, repo to this branch. And you're done. That's it. You go to GitHub, you check uh, whatever the the link is that you that you have, and you're done. Basically, like it's uh, there's nothing else you need to do. Oops, no, it wasn't that. I wanted my account. So, all right. Right, so you just push. Uh, once you push and you have, you know, this GH pages uh, uh, branch, uh, this is only yeah. even for this is only even for uh, organization and automatic uh, whatever. Is, but even main can also deploy on GH pages. You just have to point GH pages to the right uh, folder. Let me try. This brain is. I check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you guys hear him? My check. I can hear you. Well. Hmm? I cannot hear you. Well. Oh. So, uh, all right, since it was even the end of the call, 
uh, the rain is getting too much. Uh, if you have any other questions, I was what I'm saying is that uh, it doesn't have to be uh, the branch GH pages that is uh, deployed. You can even go to pages and specify a branch. You can say main or you know anything you want. So it will deploy main. So it's just just pages for organization and knowing that you have that uh, particular branch to um, you know host your uh, your pages. Right. But uh, other than that, I think uh, that's it. And uh, the time is up for us. If you have any more questions, please, please, uh, you know, DM me or put them on the channel and tag me and uh, I'll be able to answer them. Mic check, mic check. Check, Sam. Did you attend to this in the chat? I was seeing a couple of questions. Yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, I said, yes, Netlify. Uh, you know, than StormKit because Netlify gives you more uh, websites and Verso as well and search. Um, yeah, so yeah, I did, I did attend to this. In All the right, chat. yeah, that's good, that's good. All right, uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I hope to see your challenge three uh, hosted on Netlify, that's the homework. Um, and then try to host challenge one and two as well. Uh, put it on, you know, search or Verso or GH pages, uh, anywhere that is easier for you. All right, uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much, and uh, yeah, thank you. See you around. Thank you. All right, Augustin, I love the energy. The, uh, the, the, there is a question in the channel if possible, provide another chance to follow this this session, please. Oh, for, for this session. Uh, but you, you'd have to give me, um, you'd have to give me like, you know, what are the things that you want uh, maybe like more uh, information about, right? You know, yes. is it the cloud? Yes. Is it the whatever? Like, what do you want to have, uh, uh, you know, as more information about this? So you let me know, then maybe maybe we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right. See you guys around. Thank you so much.